What is up guys, it's your boy Rick Kakis and today we have the guide for how to beat the brand new Lightfall campaign on Legendary Difficulty, showcasing the absolutely cracked builds my team used to overcome this challenge and don't worry we have one for each of the three different classes as well as a ton of tips and tricks to help you beat this Legendary campaign as easily as possible and so let's get started. But just before we do guys, hey. If you're interested in getting a new PC, check out Evolve PCs. You can customize exactly what you need for your gaming dreams. Check the link in the description down below. All right, now, as for the Legendary campaign, a lot of you are probably wondering, well, why would I even do it on Legendary difficulty? Well, during the campaign itself, you're actually gonna get more rewards than normal, with two reward chests dropping, as opposed to only one, I believe, on normal difficulty. In addition to that, if you are able to beat the entire campaign on Legendary difficulty, you will get, as you can see, a full gear set, so both armor and weapons of blues at 1770 light, which will give that character a significant boost in power level. Also, you will actually be able to choose one of the new exotic armor pieces for whatever character you beat the campaign on, as you can see. So, in my opinion, definitely some worthwhile rewards. So, the first tip here is that if you haven't started the campaign yet, it may be a good idea to head down to the tower and talk to Ikora Ray and pick up all of the new fragments that were added to the game with Lightfall to assist in your build crafting. But moving on to the loadouts, I was playing a Titan and I went in there with the good old Arc Grenadier build. So I've got Thunder Crash, Towering Barricade, then I've got Seismic Strike, Pulse Grenade over Storm Grenade because Storm has been nerfed so many times. Then we've got Touch of Thunder and Knockout as our aspects and the fragments are Spark of Recharge, Spark of Shock, Spark of Ions, and Spark of Magnitude. Now moving to the weapons, First of all, I have a Pardonar Dust with Disorienting Grenades. Guys, this is incredibly important and I have a good role here with Autoloading Holster as well as Demolitionist. And we'll talk later about why you absolutely want one of these in your fire team. Next up, I have a Forgiveness Sidearm here with Demolitionist plus Adrenaline Junkie, quite the wombo combo. And frankly, I just wanted to get as much grenade energy as possible. I wanted an arc weapon with Demolitionist because your grenades on Legendary are doing way more work than your weapons for the most part, especially more than your primary. And then after that, we have a Thunderlord. If you have one with the Catalyst, this thing is phenomenal. It just shreds through groups of enemies and does great damage against bosses. Moving on from there, however, the featured exotic armor piece is actually the Armamentarium, simply giving me another grenade charge. Now, this is because the Heart of Inmost Light caught a pretty severe nerf with the introduction of Lightfall, and just straight up getting an extra grenade is actually going to matter quite a bit, and more than you think in the Lightfall campaign, again, we'll talk about why later. Uh, as for the mods, we have Sniper Damage Resistance, then we have uh, Emergency Reinforcement, which will consume my armor charges for more damage resistance, and then we also have a concussive dampener. After that, for my helmet, I've got two ashes to assets. Now, importantly, these are actually made cheaper thanks to the seasonal artifact. You can select a bonus that will reduce the cost of your grenade mods. Definitely a good idea to do. Then I've also got an arc siphon to produce those uh, orbs of power with my arc weapons. I've got uh, my gauntlets here with firepower to create orbs from throwing my grenades. Extremely good. Grenade kickstart for more grenade energy. I've got another firepower here. After that, we've got uh, Arc Weapon Surge, a great payoff for becoming armor charged. Uh, then we've got Harmonic Scavenger. And basically, this is just going to provide the bonus to whatever uh, matches your subclass. So if you are matching your weapons to your subclass, no reason not to use the Harmonic Siphoner and Holster over the actual specific elemental ones. After that, guys, for the mark, Time dilation is fantastic. It's gonna increase the amount of time you have of armor charge before they go away. After that, distribution for more ability energy and bomber specifically for more grenade energy. Moving on from there, guys. For the uh, Warlock here, we are gonna be using a Dawnblade with Well of Radiance, then Empowering Rift, 
Incinerator Snap, importantly Fusion Grenades, then we've got Icarus Dash and Touch of Flame as our aspects, Ember of Searing, Ember of Solace, Ember of Wonder, and Ember of Torches. Now, as for the weapons, the Wither Horde is phenomenal here, one of the best PvE weapons in the game. Then, the Callus Mini Tool, specifically one uh, with Incandescent to spread that Scorch, very synergistic with your Solar build. And lastly, our Heavy is the Roar of the Bear Rocket Launcher, importantly because it also has Demolitionist, letting you throw a Fusion Grenade and instantly reload your Rocket Launcher. And that's because we are going to be using, as our featured exotic here, uh, the Starfire Protocol. So fusion grenades have an additional charge and you get them back for doing weapon damage while empowered, hence the empowered rift. So you can spam so many fusion grenades. Uh, this is even better than normal because of the new solar fragments. If you want to incorporate those into your build, they work really well with a Starfire Protocol build. And as for the mods here, Concussive Dampener, Arc Resistance, and Harmonic Resistance uh, is going to be great. Then moving on from there, the helmet is going to have double ashes to assets yet again. Again, we get that discount from the seasonal artifact and then a special ammo finder. For the gauntlets, we have fastball, bolstering, detonation, and lastly, firepower. Then after that, guys, uh, for the legs, we've got kinetic scavenger, and then we've got uh, solar weapon surge times two. Importantly, you can actually stack these for even more damage when you have an armored charge. Then after that, guys, uh, for the bond, another time dilation is phenomenal. And then we've got the Reaper class item mod here to produce orbs after using your class ability. Very, very good. And then, guys, after that, uh, for the Hunter, last but certainly not least, we have an Arc Strider with Gathering Storm as the super. We've got Gambler's Dodge, Combination Blow, Flashbang Grenades, and then we've got Flow State and uh, Lethal Current as our aspects. And then we have Spark of Resistance, Spark of Ions, Spark of Amplitude, and Spark of Feedback for our Fragments. Now, looking at the weapons, importantly, you need a shotgun here specifically with one two punch to enhance your melee damage. That's because this is going to be a melee build. For the primary, the Aikilos SMG here with Volt Shot is phenomenal as just a great general purpose primary here. After that, though, the heavy is going to be the Anarchy. This benefited from a 20% damage buff, and I did end up switching uh, to the Anarchy to try it out. It's pretty darn good, especially against the bosses. You can stick them and remove main in safety. It might take a little bit longer, but it's certainly quite powerful. Moving on from there, guys, our featured exotic armor is the Assassin's Cowl. So this is going to let your melee final blows grant invisibility and restore health and shields. So powerful. And then for our other mods with this helmet, we importantly have Hands-on for Super Energy, then we've got Heavy Ammo Scout and Heavy Ammo Finder. After that for the Gauntlets, Heavy Handed times 2 for a ton of Orb of Power production after a melee kill. Then we've got, uh, for the chest piece, Harmonic Resilience, a melee damage resistance you absolutely want with a melee build, and Concussive Dampener. Then for the legs, we've got Arc Weapon Surge times 2 then we've got Harmonic Scavenger. And after that, guys, we've got a bomber and then two time dilations. Now, this will stack, giving even longer before your uh, armor charges decay. So definitely an option there. And overall, guys, these builds were just absolutely phenomenal at slaying out against the ads. Now, the next question you've got to ask is, well, how many people do you want to do the campaign with? Because legendary difficulty is actually going to affect the enemies you face by scaling their health in accordance with how many people are in your fire team. In fact, before Lightfall, it would scale it so high that it was actually better to do legendary difficulty things with two people compared to three. However, with my experience through the Lightfall campaign, I found it completely doable with three people. It did not seem as ridiculous as it was with, for example, the Witch Queen campaign or the Operation Seraph's Shield uh, mission on Legendary. So three people, no problem, two people, no problem. And even solo, you will have the easiest time per se on an enemy to enemy basis because their health will be the lowest.
Now moving on to a bunch of tips here, based on the builds we looked at, they aren't just good on their own, they're actually good specifically for the campaign. And the first example of that is my blinding, or I should say disorienting, grenade launcher. Because it turns out the tormentors that are going to be a significant challenge to overcome in the legend difficulty can be blind locked as you can see right here. So when you're facing a tormentor, one guy with a blinding grenade launcher and a lot of ammo can completely lock these guys down. They will never ever attack you and then you can get right up to them, melee them, shotgun them. They are so easy to deal with. So again, absolutely incorporate some blinding into your builds. Now, moving on from there, guys, something else important is that during the Lightfall campaign, there are several times where you interact with, like, strand empowerments, and then you get your strand subclass unlocked for a certain amount of time. You get much more uh, recharge rate for those strand abilities. But importantly, what you have on will actually affect those moments when you are empowered by Strand. A great example of this is why I'm using the Armamentarium and my teammate is using the Assassin's Cowl. Those will work and activate when you're empowered by Strand. So you'll see I have two grapple grenades because of the Armamentarium. The Assassin's Cowl will make you invisible when you get those Strand melees with the Hunter. So absolutely keep that in mind. The exotic armor you pick matters quite a bit because of this. Now, another tip involving these enemies, a lot of them, including tormentors and other really powerful like yellow bar enemies that you wouldn't expect are finishable. And definitely if you can get the finisher on something like a tormentor, that is gonna save you a lot of time. Like it probably would have taken quite a lot of bullets or abilities to take down that remaining chunk of health when the enemy was finishable. Now guys, moving on from there, another big tip here involves leveling. So when you are doing the Lightfall campaign, each different campaign mission will have an increase in its recommended power level. But if you are doing Legendary Difficulty, the recommended power is actually kind of a bait because as you can see right here, the recommended power for this particular mission is 1650. So a lot of people are just gonna see that and try to get to that power level before they do this. But as you can see right here, the legendary modifier metal is going to reduce your overall power level to make it more challenging. So it says right here, the effective power is capped at 1635. You don't have to be anywhere near 1650. If you're below 1635, you will be at less effectiveness. But as long as you can reach 1635, again, you will be at your most effective for legendary difficulty. Really keep that in mind, guys. Always check that metal mod. It is going to be um, 15 power levels below whatever the recommended is that you actually have to get to. However, guys, another tip, if you are away from this effective power level, if you're underneath it, it is a pretty good idea to maybe do another activity and try to get your power level up before starting the next mission. Specifically, it actually outright says during the Lightfall quest when you're doing this campaign that's also you're doing alongside, it says, hey, go and do a completely different uh, quest called From Zero, and that is going to unlock some more powerful rewards to help you in your power level advancement. With the one exception being during the campaign, you are gonna be asked to do a certain strike, and it's just a random strike you select on Neomuna on Neptune, and it has a much higher power level than you probably are at the time. Don't get baited by this, guys, uh, because You've been minus 15 power the entire time during this campaign, right? So if you're minus 15 below this strike, that's totally fine. The enemies are gonna be not much more powerful than what you've been facing already. In fact, they're gonna be easier because they don't have other legendary modifiers increasing their health and so on. So again, if you're under light for that strike, don't worry about it. You probably will still be able to get it done if you've been doing the campaign up to that point. Now moving on from there, another tip involving that seasonal artifact I mentioned earlier. So when you are doing this campaign, 
you're gonna be getting a decent amount of experience. So remember when you're halfway through, when you've done a few missions, to go and check your seasonal artifact. If you've been increasing in levels, you may have new things to unlock. And these new things can make you more powerful and make your journey through the campaign easier. For example, we ended up unlocking a, a certain mod that if you were to break an enemy shield that matched the enemy type, you'd produce an orb of power, which obviously matters quite a bit when you're trying to get armor charged, which all our builds are. So definitely remember to go and check the seasonal artifact and unlock stuff as you go. And guys, that's pretty much it. There's nothing really out of the ordinary when it comes to this campaign in terms of killing enemies other than those tormentors, which are literally easy mode if you follow my advice for them. So it's really just about taking things slow, spamming your abilities. Those are likely going to be much more effective at killing enemies than your particular weapons. And also guys, your heavy weapon really, really matters. All of the heavy weapons I showed in this uh, video are cracked. You do not want to you know, put on a really, really good exotic primary and sacrifice your heavy. And that's because during the campaign, as always, you're going to have rally flags. So you're going to go to completely full heavy whenever you have a boss fight and stuff like that. So you need to make sure your heavy is schmacking. That should be the, frankly, most powerful of all three of your weapons because you get that guaranteed ammo for it when it matters. And so guys, that is it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.